Hey everybody, welcome to John Bomb Workshop. I'm John. So this morning, went down to start the smoker because it's gonna smoke some dinner for tonight. And the same problem that I always have whenever I go to smoke some meat came up. And so anyway, I thought today is the day I'm gonna solve the problem. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. As you can see down here, got the smoker going. It smells good, by the way. It's been on a while. The problem I run into is you can see the cord there on the ground runs into the golf cart garage or really it's my storage shed I'm tired of every time i use this thing i got to pull this extension cord out the smoker sets right here in this spot right here what i really need is an outdoor plug right behind that post that i can plug this thing into just be so much easier than having to open the doors and pull that cord out every single time so i think what i'll do today is install my outdoor plug okay just to give you a little better idea what i'm going to do down there a couple years ago when i put this light switch in it's on this lapped siding here and it won't set level if i were to just mount the switch or out or an outlet on this vertical lap siding so what i did was just cut out a piece of smart trim here and I mount it first and then i'll secure my remodel box to that so it's nice and straight when i get it put in thought i'd show this as an example of how i'm going to do that down there and here we go so the outlet will be opposite side of this wall here the smoker sits outside over there i'm gonna draw my power from this switch here this is a timer switch that runs my outdoor light there, right up and around the corner there. This is a GFCI protected circuit it's run by a GFCI outlet that's out front, an outdoor outlet that's in front of the house that runs the other outlet in this room here and this this light. So it's got a pigtail into this. It's a 14 gauge wire. It's a 15 amp circuit. And I think I got a 15 commercial grade 15 amp outlet, and we'll just mount it down below. I'm going to go about maybe 18 inches off the ground or so. Seems about right. I think code says it just has to be under six and a half feet from the ground. So 18 inches is well under that and within that requirement. So let's get going, we get some tools. The first thing we need to do is make this mounting plate here. All I have really is this one by six smart side. It's actually an inch thick, which is what I need because I mean, because it is overlapping each other. As you can see, this is one inch on the corner here too. It just, just thick enough to accept that siding there. So this is what I need, but I just don't need it this big, this wide. So I think in order to keep it consistent with the rest of with what I've done so far, I'm just gonna go ahead and make it six and a quarter inches tall and four and a half inches wide. I got that cut now. I think I'll run a little chamfer around the edge of it here just to make it match the other one. I think it looks nice when it's like that. So. That looks nice. Put this center of this in here. Just trace around it so I know where to make my cut because this thing will actually mount inside this mounting plate here. All right, I got this on here. Put it on there, I centered it, drew around it. Now I got my lines here. Take my drill bit. Jigsaw. Fits the snug. All right, that is going to be just about right. I marked the center where my box is going to be at right here, and then the where the edge of the box is going to sit. That'll clear that stud inside there. So my mounting plate. Put it up there. I'm gonna center, put the X in the middle hole. And then I'm just gonna trace around this. Yeah. What I better do first, I better put a level up here and see how it looks. Right there. Trace the outside edge of this. All we gotta do is cut it out. Ah! 
Alright, now I'll mark the LSD behind it. Cut it out. box and see how it fits. Alright, that's gonna work good. This location does not get wet. I mean I know that because I live here. I don't think I'm gonna put any flashing in here. Maybe if I can find a piece I'll throw it in here but otherwise I'm just gonna caulk it good and give it a paint job. It must be my lucky day. I did find a piece of flashing for this. So it'll go in there just like this and keep that water tight. Hmm, I don't really like the looks of that. A little too wide. Looks better, just a little adjustment on that. So I'm going to use some uh, structure adhesive behind this, and then I'll just put some finished nails in here, and then we'll just give this thing a good caulking, and once the caulk dries, we'll paint it. So I got that caulked with this DAP Alex Fast Dry. It says paint in 20 minutes, so we're gonna give that a shot. And I think while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'll run inside and see if I can't find the power source for that, turn the power off. Okay, I'm gonna go inside and find the power for this circuit. I'm gonna use a Klein Tools Digital Circuit Breaker Finder. So the way this works is you got this little transmitter, you plug it in, little red light comes on, see that? Little red lights come on. And when that red light's on, this thing here, we'll find that circuit in the breaker box. Let's head on in and see if we can find that breaker. It looks like the power's off, but we'll check it again. No power there at all. We'll get a, a wire run between these two boxes and I'll be right back. I'm certainly not an electrician, but I have done a lot of wiring on my own personal property over the years. That being said, I'm very comfortable making simple electrical connections. If you're not confident in your electrical abilities or if electricity makes you nervous, perhaps you should call a qualified electrician to make these connections for you. Romex strippers on there. As you can see it just right there. So I guess I'll put a couple pigtails together here. I got these ideal multiple, you know, the whatever these things are. I think I might put some wagos in there and make some pigtail of this so that I can get all these in there. I want to show you these things here, these ideal they do just pull off of here. I mean, they're, they're tough to pull off, but I mean, they pull, do pull off. If anybody ever runs into those, you don't have to cut the wires. You can just pull these off. And I want to use some, all I have is three in the way it goes. So I guess I'll use some of these. Cause I'm actually gonna have, be joining on need four wires together here, so. Neutrals are going to be the same.
putting all my boost drills together, all my grounds together. This is the travel. This is actually what goes to the fixture. This wire here, this black wire here is the uh, power in. So I'm going to take that loose here. And I'm actually going to use my way go here. Power going out now. Now we just need a jumper wire from the Wago to the power for my fixture. So, just have to give me a little chunk of wire here. Get a hold of that black one. Power comes in, power goes here, power goes down and out to the outlet down below. And we've got to plug this neutral for the timer. Switch back into this block of neutrals. And the ground back. We'll put it in with all those grounds. That's it. Yeah, I'm gonna get all this organized and put back in there and then we'll do the outlet. Okay guys, show you a 15 amp outlet here. It's a commercial one, which I mean I like these so much better because you can put the wire in and tighten this down instead of having to wrap it around the lug. I mean this is as simple as, you know, black to gold. Gold is the hot side of your outlet. Silver is the neutral side, the white, so white to silver, black to gold, and then of course the bare copper to green for ground. And put it in there and so I just wanted to point out that code says you gotta have six inches from where it comes into the box and three inches for where it leaves the box. We got three and a half inches there so plenty per code you don't want to cut these too short because the next guy that comes along i mean you know it's it's a sometimes it's a battle so leave plenty of wires in there these things especially 14 gauge is pretty easy to deal with so anyway i'm gonna get this put back together and get the power back on maybe give this a coat of paint and i'll be back to wrap it up put the power back on as you can see two right lights lit up i don't know if you can read that or not but that's correct so i'm just showing that it's correct quickly wired then light yep, works so back in business all right finished product looks nice this is gonna be much handier for me going forward after to mess with that citric cord i guess that's it for this video if you haven't subscribed yet please do helps me out a lot and i'll see you next time